Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. It's a delightful new book out which you ought to read called On Earth We Are Just Learning to Live. It's about the life and some of the reminiscences of a modern Russian archpriest named Valentin Biryakov. He lived in Siberia. Actually, he still lives in Siberia. He's 95 in the Altai province. And he lived a life like really nobody in this room that I know of has lived. He, from childhood, experienced what happened when the Soviets came and took everything you had, put them out in the middle of nowhere to die, survived off of virtually nothing, and ended up being a soldier in the siege of Leningrad for 872 days, in which he had to eat what he described as weed bread. They ground it up out of weeds. And he said that the one bite he got a day was like chocolate to him. So when I hear people complaining about not having anything to eat for fast, it's kind of hard to hear that when you hear people that had to survive off of such things. We don't know that kind of struggle. We surely don't. And he's lived his whole life in this matter of simplicity, but with absolute faith in God. That's how he survived all those things, with absolute faith in God. One great story he tells amongst the many is he tells about a monk he had the privilege to meet when he was in his 40s, uh, Father Valentin. And he went out and met him, of course, in Siberia as well, and his name was Father Piman. And he had heard from a, a friend of his about how he was clairvoyant and that how he worked miracles, and he went to see him. And of course, when Father Valentin walked in the room, he already knew his name. He knew every thought he was having and was telling, correcting him the things he was thinking in the middle of it. It's kind of disarming. Well, Father Piman began to tell him his life, about his life, because he wanted to know about it. And one story he told that was amongst the amazing stories was about a time when he was allowed to open the church briefly, and then one night they was closed, so they began serving in a house. He had snuck the Antimensian out of the house, into the house, and he was serving services every night, and uh, of course this came to the attention of the local Soviet authorities, and they were going to shut him down on Pascha. They knew he was going to serve Pascha. Well, he was aware of this, so they got it done by 3 a.m. as fast as they could, and the authorities came and they had cleaned everything out of there. There was nothing resembling a church at that point. There was five police officers. Father Piman already had a chair with five others set up, one for him and five for the officers. He knew how many officers were coming. No one had told him. They came. They addressed him as they were wont to do by his secular name before he was a priest or a monk, and by his patronymic, his last name. He began one by one. Hello, Ivan Petrovich. Hello, Grigory Vasilievich. Every one of them by their names. They were very disarmed. He had never met them. They had never met him. How do you know this, they were saying. He said, well, you have come looking for me, but indeed I have caught you. He said, what do you mean you caught us? They began looking around to see if an ambush was going on of some sort. Nothing of the sort. He's smiling at them the whole time. Then he begins to talk about this world we live in now is so full of sins, and he begins to mention certain sins, which match each of them one by one. And one... First, the first soldier goes, Bachishka. How do you know that? That's me you're talking about. This went on to the fourth to the fifth. Each and every one of them, he knew their sins. And then he said, they said, Bachishka, Father, teach us. We don't understand what's going on here. Please just don't tell anyone. He says, oh, I won't tell anyone, but you will go home and tell your wives, and so forth and so forth. He begins to tell them, you are not baptized, you are not married, you are not baptized, each and every one. Your wife's not baptized. And over the course of time, he baptized each of these five officers, married them off, and they became his best of friends. He had weapons they didn't understand. What he had was the Holy Spirit. He could see them as they were. He didn't see them as the Soviet officers that came in that were there for bad purposes. He could see them as they were intended to be by God. What does that have to do with today? Everything. First of all, in the feast of today, 
You have the restoration of the holy icons. And yes, this is an historical event which took place in 843. We can read about it. The Empress Theodora and this great procession that took place in Constantinople. And after a period of iconoclasm, the icons were stored to the churches. And this is important because the icons are a real image of how things are supposed to be, especially when they're done properly. They're not done in a fleshly style, at least they shouldn't be. They're done in a style that portrays something deeper, something spiritual, something sober, something somewhat austere, but something prayerful and repentant. And something that is focused in prayer toward God. Icons have the mask removed of the flesh and show forth humans as they are, as they really are or should be. In the gospel today, same message, it matches up fairly well. Jesus comes along with Philip and he meets Nathaniel. And he doesn't just do like we do and look, oh, there's Nathaniel, and see him in his face. It says, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. He was able to see behind anything Nathaniel might have had and see who Nathaniel really was, a deeply pure man. But because we say he has no guile, Nathaniel wasn't wearing many masks. He could see Nathaniel as the child of Christ, the child of God that he was meant to be. We, from childhood, Learn to live with masks and put on various disguises and things for people. With some people we act this way, with other people we act that way. We smile with these people, we moan and groan with these people. We act like you're very pious with these people. We rant and rave about others with the other people. You know, we go drinking with these people to excess, and then with the other ones we act like we're deep people of prayer. This shouldn't be. This shouldn't be the way it is at all. Very few people in my life have I met were that authentic. They were the way they were no matter who they were with. Elder Ephraim would be an example. My spiritual father from Monopolis many years ago would be an example. I never saw them act in any different way with any single person. Everybody was equal. Everybody was the same. Whether it was the bishop to the lowest person in the monastery to the lowest visitor. They acted the same. No pretenses, no faith, but just love. Just God. That's the way it should be with everyone. So we should we should learn that our behavior, the behavior that I put on when uh, Bishop Alexander comes, for example, or Archbishop Dimitri was here, or when you're talking with me, God willing, should be the same as it is with my family, <coughs> with my friends. Yes, it's going to be a little more intimate value with the family, but still. No faces, no fakeness. That's what we like about children so much. That's why we say we must become as little children. Because the little, especially the infants, when they're sad, they're sad. When they're happy, they're happy. And they forgive you for everything. They're very childlike. They're very Christ-like. We've lost the image because we put on mask after mask after mask. And to win Christ, to be truly as God, we have to remove our masks and be who we are. I said in one of my little talks this week in one of the services, if we've taken the first week of Lent seriously, clean week seriously, I mean really seriously, and fasted as we should, which is much more intensely than the rest of the year, and yes, it should have made us weak, and it should have been difficult. Not killing us, but difficult. And if we paid attention to the services, and if we've cut off those infernal boxes that we all watch, and the radios and everything, and just listened to Christ for a week of our life, giving our life to Christ, we start to see things in our hearts, and it's not comfortable all the time. It's rather difficult because stuff starts to come out. It's like we begin a prayer discipline, all of a sudden we become more angry, we become whatever, our, our passions rise up, we wonder why, and that's a good thing because the passions are starting to come out to the surface. We're not wearing a mask anymore. We don't have all the distractions around us, God really in this past week, and therefore we experience a little bit of pain of heart. But this is good, because the first stage in the spiritual life is what? Purification. You can't get to illumination and deification without purification. And things have to come out, bad things. The dark corners of the heart have to be swept clean. The cobwebs removed, the filth out of our hearts we might become a fit dwelling for the kingdom of heaven. The paradise might reign in our hearts. 
we become authentic human beings by removing the masks that we wear, we become humble because humility is self-knowledge. And there's no limit to this humility because we can always, always, always learn more about ourselves because if God is a mystery, then certainly the human person is a mystery because we are created in His image and likeness. So we too are mysterious in who we are and deep in the fathomable abyss of what might be in there. The wonderful story of, I heard one time Bishop Calisto was told that Father Sophroni came to speak at Oxford, that wonderful saintly elder. And he said he received that last question in his talk, which he said he himself always dreads because it's always the impossible question, the last question. He said, someone looked at him and said, Father Sophroni, please tell me, what is God? Father Sophroni looked at him, calmly as always, and said, I too will ask you, what is man? The man could not answer him. That was the end of that discussion. Because man is created in the image and likeness of God. And because of that, we are to be likenesses of God in all of our behaviors, at all times, in all places. That's how Father Piman could see those five men as images of God, despite the hideous masks they were wearing at that point. Now that too will affect when we start acting like authentic beings, human beings. And it's a way to become authentic human beings, how we react to our neighbor, if we begin to look at people in the same way. You think of the story of Saint Seraphim of Saroth, a wonderful holy elder who Greeted everyone, as we know, with those words, my joy, when they would knock on his door. Perhaps sometimes they weren't that joyful people to be around. But it's what he said. So one day, as you may know the story, Father Seraphim was a rather robust, strong young man. And three robbers come to his cell, knock on the door. Most likely, he said, come in, my joy. Knowing what he did about them, they were carrying the equivalent of American baseball bats and beat him to where he was hunched over for the rest of his life. He lived a long life after that. He forgave them after this as well. They thought he had gold in his cell. Of course, he did not. He had nothing. A pauper. But he could see not the image that we see on a face, that hideous mask they were wearing, where he could see the image and likeness of God in them. Because there is an icon in God's eyes of each and every one of us already, of how we are supposed to look. When we become humble and empty ourselves of all this filth, all these passions, all these false pretenses, and live <coughs> as Christians, we become who we are intended to be glorious, radiant images and likenesses of God. He intends us to be icons. He has the icon set up already for each and every one of you and for me. We just have to attain to it. And it's actually quite simple. To get out of the way, to stop being prideful, to follow Christ's commandments, to love our neighbor, to follow the way of the church, to pray, to follow the gospel. And in doing that, we become authentic human beings who the Lord comes up and say, doesn't say, oh, look, there is such and such. There is Father Cyprian. He says, bam, that's what it is about him. The good and the bad. Some of us fear seeing elders. I've heard people say to me before, how did you go see such and such elder? I'd be terrified to see that elder. And they look at them and go, why? why? But because they're going to know things about me. I said, good. How is that good? Because then you can finally work it out and get rid of it and be healed and live a life that is, is the yoke of Christ, full of light and joy and without burdens. To seek brothers and sisters from this day on this feast of the restoration of the icons to restore not just the image of the icons of the church, but to restore those images in us because we are to be icons of Christ as well. In whom there is no guile. Amen. Amen.